Hi! We all know that consistency is a key in racket stringing. But if you can string in less time without compromising quality, that's always a bonus. In this video, I'll share with you how to install your crosses faster while reducing friction. I'll also share with you a bonus tip on how to maintain equal tension on your outer mains when stringing one piece. All right, let's go inside. All right, so before I demonstrate this technique in weaving the crosses, I'm gonna show you a couple examples of rackets here. And what you wanna do is locate the outer main string, outer main string, and see which cross string is at intersecting that. So you can see uh, from here, it's a second cross that intersects that main. So that's gonna be important to know. Um, the, this other racket here, if you look at the same outer main, uh, you'll notice that it's the third cross that intersects with that string. So what's gonna happen is when you start your crosses, and again, this is on a two piece string job. So I have a racket here that's similar to the one I just showed you, where the third cross was intersecting with the last outer main. So what I'm gonna do is locate that, that's right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and start weaving that third cross. And then I'm gonna just work my uh, way backwards to the second and then the first. So what I wanna do is just make sure I have enough length so I can create a loop. And I usually what I do is I'm, I just pull this once and then twice. And that's about enough string here. And this string is about, about four feet of length of string. So basically I'm gonna just use this amount of string to weave the first three crosses. So that's why it's a little bit faster than compared to if you were weaving the first string and then pulling the whole length of string, which is about 17 to 19 feet of string through those first uh, three crosses. And what reduces the friction is this area right here at the 10 and two o'clock areas where the two, the main, the outer main and the cross intersect. So you're really eliminating the amount of friction because you're eliminating the amount of string that's passing through there as you're pulling it through. So I left these strings on tension for now. And what I wanna do is just make sure I have enough string length to reach my tension head. I'm gonna use the offset tube. I've done another video on this, so I'll leave the link below how to use that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tension this first cross. And then I'm just working my way up to the second one now. So again, this is only about four feet of string that I'm using to weave these first three crosses. I'm gonna pull this uh, third cross or tension this last, I mean, third cross. And then after I tension the third cross, I'm gonna go ahead and retension this first one and tie off at the top. I have a racket here that I'll be stringing with one piece. And like the previous racket, I do wanna make sure I locate the outer main, which is right here. And then pay attention to which cross string is intersecting that main. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just count, that's one, two, and three. So it is a third cross right there. So when I measure out the length for the short side, I am gonna allow for that because I'm gonna install all the mains and then three crosses at the top. So I have my set of strings here. I'll be doing this in all um, a synthetic gut. And so I'm gonna use the frame. And on the first string length, uh, you just need to make sure you have enough length to reach the tension head right, right there. And then I'm gonna count off the uh, other um, seven mains because there's a total of 16, which eight is half. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then the three crosses at the top. And I try to line it up so that it uh, goes where the string will eventually be uh, installed. So that's one, two, and three. And I'm holding that, that mark right there. And what I'm gonna do is bring that mark up to the head eventually. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread it through the bottom first and then I'm gonna bring it up to the top eventually. So I have the string here, the end is coming through the bottom throat and it doesn't matter which side, uh, this particular racket can be uh, either side. 
uh, if you're doing the uh, Prince O-Port rackets, you need to make sure you pay attention to which side uh, is the tie-off um, for the mains. All right, so I'm pulling this through. I'm still holding this uh, area where I'm, the, the mark. And what I'm gonna do is eventually bring that up to the top, but I first have to bring it up to the throat. So I'm still bringing it right there. So it's right there, right on the uh, edge of the throat, but I'm gonna just now let go and then kind of bring it up to here and then just pull it. So that's approximately where I was holding it in the first place. So now I have a short side that's allowing for one side of the mains and three of the top crosses. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, install the mains and I'll come back to you when I reach towards the end of the main string installation. Now I've completed all the mains on one side, which is the short side, and I'm gonna continue on the opposite side and I'm not gonna use my string clamp, and this is the seventh main coming down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a pad on the outside of the frame, use my starting clamp, and clamp it from the outside. So basically I wanna free up this clamp that's on the top so that I can clamp the uh, crosses that are gonna be installed. And I'll go ahead and retension this string later on. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. And so what I'm going to do now is on the short side is uh, start doing the crosses. But remember I uh, allowed for three crosses. So I have one that's here, another here, and then there's a third empty hole. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, weave this one through. And I got to count on this side too. So it's one, two, and three. So I'm going to go in this hole. And so basically I'm going to just go ahead and uh, weave tension and do this for the top three crosses. Now again, what's good about this technique is that I just went into the, um, I did the third hole and uh, again, that's this area right here in the 10 and two o'clock areas is where you have a lot of friction and uh, chances of burning the string. So what I did is I only had this much length, which is about three feet of string that went right through that area. And, um, and again, there's going to be another benefit at the end, which I'll explain. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and weave, uh, complete the three crosses at the top. So now I'm going to go back to the long side and free up this starting clamp. And the purpose for this was to make sure that I could, uh, that I could free up the string clamp so I could work on those top three crosses. So because of all of these maneuvers, uh, this could work on a swivel clamp machine, but not on a machine that has glide bars. All right, so I'm coming into this hole and it is a crossover string. So you can see the picture that I am going to enter underneath the uh, already installed string. And because I'm coming underneath the string, there's more space. Uh, I also wanna make sure that as I pull this string through, that I'm pulling it at a downwards angle. I don't wanna pull it up and uh, increase the amount of friction that's going across that crossover string. So I am pulling it slowly, and in addition to that, just going more at a downwards angle. So it'll reduce some of that. And so this is the eighth main coming up. I'm gonna have to finish this one. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and weave the fourth cross and I'll continue to keep weaving towards the end of the racket. And I'll come back to you when I reach the end. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tension my last cross. Earlier in this video, I men mentioned that there was an added benefit in why um, you would be weaving that top three crosses other than reducing the friction on those outer mains. Uh, what, what happens is if you're tying off typically in a one piece and you have a short side, uh, there's always gonna be one main uh, that's looser than the other. 
So by having the, uh, the tie off as a cross string, then you're not gonna deal with that uneven tension that's on the outer main. In today's video, I share with you three tips. One, how to even out the tension on your outer mains and your crosses. Two, how to install your crosses faster by starting from either the second or the third cross and working with only four feet of string. And three, by installing your crosses in that fashion, you'll also be reducing the amount of friction going across the outer mains. Now, if you thought these tips were helpful, please comment below. Thanks for watching. Happy stringing. And let your strings play.